Let's welcome to the show former NYPD Lieutenant Darren Porcher. Okay, L.A. Uh, County D.A., George Gascon. He survives the second recall. They didn't, it's good to see you. He survives the second recall. They don't get enough signatures, right? But the tedious orgy of self-righteousness in his office, even his deputy DAs like John Hatami saying, you know what, we can't stand him. We got to fight against his weak on crime uh, policies. So that's, we've got deputy DAs up in arms against Gascon right now. What do you say? Well, for starters, good evening, Elizabeth. And this is really an atrocity for the citizens that live in Los Angeles County. When you have assistant district attorneys, senior assistant district attorneys within that office that are separating themselves from George Gaston's policies, this is clearly something that we see that's affecting that population in a negative way. And I blame George Soros because it was George Soros that funded uh, Gaston's campaign when he came into incumbency back in 2020. So, you know, Hatami, the deputy DA, says that Gascon's policy of releasing dangerous felons and murderers back onto the streets of L.A. is creating a, quote, ticking time bomb. He's going to eventually release a murderer, is going to victimize someone else, but he's saying Gascon doesn't really care and that he's not stepping up to the job of the DA. He's supposed to fight for the victims and their families to make sure there's accountability, that everybody's safe, that there's justice. The people in California do not feel safe any longer. We had Caitlyn Jenner on talking about that last week. She said the same thing. Yeah, well, if you look at what Gascon is doing, he's following in the pathway of the San Francisco district attorney that was recalled a couple of months ago. This is something that's obvious. You go in one year, you make a, a critical assessment in terms of if your policies are working or if, they, if they're not working. Based on that litmus test, then that's how you can advance the agenda that you feel is best for that population. However, Gascon is not doing that. I think he's just operating on the fly, if you want to call it that, because the crime Crime rate in Los Angeles is re reaching a meteoric high, and nothing is being well, done internally. This, and I question why the governor didn't step in. The, that's a good point because Patricia Wenskunis, she's the founder and CEO of Crime Survivors Incorporated. It's California-based. It's focused on helping victims of violent crime and their families. She's saying she is extremely worried for victims and survivors of crime after the second recall of Gascon failed. I mean, they're feeling like they're dealing with the moral vanity and the moral superiority of, of these, you know, white shoe kind of prosecutors who don't live on the front lines of what their policies create. Where is the support for the victims? All I hear is this decriminalization, but I don't see any support for the victims. The population is under siege. The district attorney is the person that's supposed to invoke law and order within that community of Los Angeles, but he has failed to hit the mark. He can either make this opportunity or miss this opportunity, and unfortunately, George Gascon has missed this opportunity as a result. Darren Porcher, thanks for joining us. Good to see you.